Hello everyone, welcome back to Everyday Kelly. My name is Kelly. So it might be a little bit late to do a video like this, um, a what I read in 2021 video, uh, but you know, I generally find that at the end of a year and at the beginning of a new year, I just need a little bit of time to kind of relax and recharge. Um, I also ran into a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, so this is actually, I think, the third time that I'm attempting this video. So hopefully everything will go okay with this video. Um, but you know, better late than never is what I always say. So let's get into it. Let's uh, see everything that I read in 2021. I'm not going to go really deep in depth with some of the books that I read in the first half of 2021 uh, because I did a mid-year recap about six months ago, six or seven months ago now. Um, and if you haven't watched that video, I will link it in the description for you in case you want to check it out. Um, so, uh, but I will um, just kind of go through the whole list and then the books that I haven't really talked too much about, I will go a little bit more in depth in those. Uh, so let's go and let's see what I read in 2021. Okay, so starting from the top of the list, we've got A Timeless Christmas by Alexis Stanton, Clan Lands by Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish, The Paris Library by Janet Skesleen Charles, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, and that was actually one of my, probably my favorite book of 2021. It was a really good one. The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, the Midnight Library by Matt Haig, and that was another one that I really enjoyed. Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. The Foundling by Stacey Halls. Eternal, Lisa Scottolini. Suli by John Grisham. Rhett Butler's People, Donald McHaig. Me, Elvis, and the Lemonade Stand Summer by Leslie Gentile. And that brings us to our current list right now. So the first book I'm going to talk about uh, is How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Uh, so this book is about a man named Tom Hazard who um, has a genetic condition which allows him the ability to live for a really long time. Um, he's not, uh, he doesn't live forever, but he just ages a lot more slowly than most people. And, um, it was a really interesting book because you kind of get to see, uh, how he, uh, just interacts and how he comes across a lot of different famous figures over the time of his whole life. Um, it was a good book. I didn't enjoy it as much as... Uh, the previous book, uh, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig that I read, um, but it was an interesting book. The next book on my list is Beecham Hall by Daniel Steele. So I don't normally read a lot of Daniel Steele books. Um, I have to admit, I kind of did in the past when I was much younger, um, but uh, now as an older adult, I don't really read a lot of her books. However, this one sounded quite interesting. Um, so this one is about uh, a woman named Winnie, uh, who, let me just double check. Um, where does she live again? Oh, she lives in a small town in Michigan. Okay. And she kind of gave up a lot of the dreams that she had for her life to move to New York, uh, to take care of her mother when her mother was sick and her mother passed away and she kind of is stuck in this small town. She gets really obsessed watching this um, TV show kind of called Beecham Hall that's kind of like a Down Abbey-esque sort of show and um, after she discovers that her best friend is sleeping with her boyfriend she decides to just take all of her savings and go to England where the show is filmed and um, just to kind of watch it being filmed and off she goes on this adventure. Um, so it's a really nice light sort of book uh, to read if you're really interested in just kind of wanting to escape, wanting to have like 
um, like a travel adventure, um, this might be a good one for you to check out. So the next book that I read, uh, I don't actually have a physical copy of it. Um, and actually it's not being published here in North America until I think in April of this year. Uh, but I did manage to get my hands on an e-copy of it, um, which is good because I really wanted to read it. And that is Reputation by Lex Croucher. So this book is uh, a Regency era, uh, kind of like a comedy. Um, it's like a Jane Austen-y, uh, if you're looking for something to read after Bridgerton sort of book. And it's about this young woman named Georgina Ellers who goes to live with her aunt and uncle and while there she meets this group of like exciting people around her age who introduce her to this world that um, is very different from what she's used to um, like kind of alcohol and drugs and you know um, just things that she would never have really seen before. Uh, what I really like about this book uh, is a lot of the dialogue is really smart and funny. Uh, it kind of actually reminded me a little bit of like a Cruel Intentions. Uh, so if you're interested in something like that, it, this might be a good book to check out. So the next book is kind of like another travel-y sort of book. Uh, if you are really wanting to escape, especially if you live in a cold climate and a lot of us can't travel right now, uh, this is another book that might be fun to read. So this one, I was really attracted to the cover uh, because it looks very like a Roman holiday-esque and I think that's on purpose. Um, and because they actually reference that movie a couple of times in this book. and. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, um, I've mentioned before that I work for a public library and this was a book that I was actually withdrawing from the system because it's kind of like an old yucky condition, but it looked like a really fun book. Um, and once, of course, once I read the description, I thought it sounded really interesting. So this one is called Italian for Beginners by Kristen Harmel. And this one is about a young woman named Kat Connolly. And she's kind of like, uh, always played it safe in her life. Her younger sister has just gotten married. She doesn't have, hasn't had much luck uh, in her personal life. And so she gets some encouragement from her father um, and from one of her friends at work uh, to just kind of take off and go to Italy for a couple of months. And so inspired by that idea, she remembers or has always remembered this guy that she met when she was in Rome, when she was um, just going to college and when she spent a summer there once. And so she contacts him. He says, hey, yeah, why don't you come? I've been looking forward to seeing you again. And she gets there and he picks her up and they, she stays at his place. And then the next morning he actually confesses to her that you weren't actually the person I was expecting. And so she of course is very mortified and she takes off and off starts this adventure through Rome. Uh, once again, if you are just really kind of craving one of those travel stories because you can't travel, this I think would really be a good one for that. The next one is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. Uh, so this book is kind of like a Cinderella twisted fairy tale, but kind of like modern day. Um, it's about this girl named Cindy who has just graduated from design school in New York. Uh, and she really wants to be a shoe designer is what she really wants to do. Um, so once she finishes school, she moves back to uh, Los Angeles to stay with her stepmother and her two stepsisters. And somewhere along the line gets convinced into appearing on this dating reality show uh, that her stepmother is producing called Before Midnight. And the thing is, is the, she finds out, I don't, I hope I'm not giving too much away. 
Um, maybe I shouldn't say. But anyway, the bachelor in the show is kind of someone she knows. Um, I'll try not to give too much away. I don't think I'm giving too much away with that. Um, it's a really uh, interesting book, kind of a light read. Um, so it's an easy light read if that's what you're looking for right now. Um, and it's the main character, I think, as you can kind of see from the artwork on the cover of the book, um, is, I don't want to say non-traditional, but in some ways kind of is. She's a little bit more of a plus size girl. And, um, that's one of the reasons why she decides to go onto the dating reality show as pretty much the only plus sized, um, bachelorette on this show. Um, so if that kind of unconventional twist on things, if that's something that you find interesting, I think, uh, once again, and if you're interested in something that's a little bit more of a lighter read, um, this might be a good one for you. Okay. So next up we have Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Uh, so this one, you might notice, uh, right away that it says James Patterson presents. So this one is a new, well, I mean, this book came out in 2016. So at that point it was new. Um, I think a new imprint, like a new venture that James Patterson, um, started on in 2016 to, uh, bring us, uh, some young adult novels. Um, I have to say though, for me, this one, this book really does not read like, a YA novel. If I did not, I mean, this one, of course I got at the library. Um, if it did not have the YA tag on the side, if I just went to the bookstore and purchased this book and didn't know anything about it, um, I would fully just think that this was written for adults. Um, I have to say right off the bat, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, so this book is, um, a it takes place in Victorian era London. So once again, that's one point it has going for it. Um, I really love like historical fiction um, and really stories that involve Jack the Ripper. I just find that really fascinating. And so it's about this young girl named Audrey Rose Wadsworth, um, who is really uh, kind of ahead of her time. She's a young girl. I think she's like 17 or 18. And she, of course, is supposed to be a proper young lady of the time, but she's really interested in forensics and she, um, or their version of forensics at that time. And she apprentices, uh, with her uncle, uh, doing autopsies and things like that. And she gets caught up in the whole kind of like investigation and, and, um, everything that was going on at the time, uh, with the murders, uh, and Jack the Ripper. Uh, I have to say, I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, I know on Goodreads, um, a lot of times after I read a book, I'll just kind of go on Goodreads to see what other people are saying about it. And there seemed to be a little bit of like mixed, reviews um but i really enjoyed this book and i felt like the writing was really smart and the character was really smart and um i mean maybe i'm just not good at like those whodunits but um you know the mystery sort of books but i mean it had me guessing till the end um i just have to say i really enjoyed this book and next we have The Ghost in the House by Sarah O'Leary. Uh, so Sarah O'Leary is a Canadian author and I actually found out about this book um, from YouTube. Someone else that I watch on YouTube was talking about it and so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, it's a quite a short book. Uh, it's not 200 pages. Um, okay, so what this book is about, um, so this book is about a woman named Faye who at the beginning of the book, she wakes up, um, she's on the piano, she's in her husband's white shirt and she's walking around the house and she's looking for her husband. 
She can't find him. She doesn't know what's going on. Things look a little different, but she's not quite sure what's going on. And then she comes to find out that she is a ghost and she has actually passed on. And it is now five years later and her husband is remarried and uh, the woman that he's remarried to has a teenage daughter and, um, and just kind of all, a lot of what kind of comes out of that. Um, so when I first started reading this book, uh, I was reading the ebook version of it. And the reason why I mentioned that is because I, after, after I was a little bit part of the way through it, I got the physical copy and it really did actually change a little bit of the feeling that I had while reading the book. And the reason for that is because each chapter also is broken into like these little, uh, like other little sections and it really kind of gives you this feeling of like a dreamlike quality or like kind of um, like the way your brain kind of switches in dreams from one thing to the next. And that's kind of how I felt while reading this book, kind of the way you would imagine. I mean, of course, nobody knows, but if you were a ghost, you kind of imagine that your mind would kind of flip from from thought to thought. Um, through the book, uh, through the uh, discovering and the emotions that she is going through and discovering that she's a ghost and everything that's going on, um, there's also a little bit of like flipping back and forth between um, her telling the story of just what their relationship was like her and her husband uh, it also really kind of gives you a look into what it must be like to you know for the person who once again of course we would never know if we're passed away but what, how you would feel in knowing that the person that you loved the most in the world, your husband or your wife, um, actually seeing them remarried to someone else and seeing them love and have a family with someone else. Overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I mean, look at that cover. It's just so colorful and beautiful. Next, we have The Judges List by John Grisham. So anyone who knows me knows that I love John Grisham. I do try to read um, all of his books that come out and The Judges List is no different. Um, the Judges List features a character from one of his previous books called The Whistler that I actually have not read. Um, but I don't really think that has any bearing on this story. At least I didn't feel like it did. Uh, so the judges list is about uh, Lacey Stoltz who uh, works for this, uh, well, I mean, it's a fictional organization um, called the Florida Board on Judicial Conduct, the Conduct. And what they do is they investigate claims of any kind of misconduct uh, against sitting judges and she meets this woman who tells her that uh, her husband, uh, not her husband, sorry, her father was murdered uh, many, many years ago and she knows, not only does she know who did it um, because she's been investigating this herself and she's been following this guy for a long time, so not only does she know who did it, but he is a well-respected sitting Florida judge. Uh, and not only that, but he has actually murdered other people and he keeps a list of people that he plans to murder. Uh, so the concept sounds very interesting and it was a good book, um, but I find or I found rather that for the size of the book, and I mean, it's not a short book, it's almost 400 pages. Um, 
for me, I just kind of felt like the story was kind of felt, you felt like it was leading somewhere. And then kind of the last little bit of the book, the last quarter of the book or so, I felt like it just kind of fell flat for me. Um, and it's funny because I felt like that with John Grisham's past two books, Suli and A Time for Mercy. Um, A Time for Mercy I loved up until the last little quarter of it. Suli, the same thing I loved. I couldn't put it down. And this one was a little slower, but uh, once again, the end was just, I felt was kind of anticlimactic. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, but still, it was a good book. Um, but I, like I said, I just kind of felt like the end left me flat. Okay, so we are up to the last book on my list, and that is A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow. Um, so I'm so scared that I'm going to mess up the description of this book. Um, it is a novella, as you can see. It's uh, not very long, and it was the last book that I read of 2021, and I was just kind of wanting something short. Uh, and not too needy to get into. So once again, this is uh, another sort of twisted fairy tale retelling, kind of modern retelling. Um, it is a fantasy book. Um, sometimes I have a little bit of difficulty with fantasy because even though I'm reading fiction, I still kind of feel like I need to buy into what's going on in the story and I need something realistic to anchor it and I find a lot of times in fantasy I can't allow my mind to just kind of get there. So this one is um, kind of like a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. Uh, not just Sleeping Beauty but some of the other previous um, origin stories of Sleeping Beauty. Um, and it's about this young girl named Zinnia who, because of an industrial accident in her town, she's got this very rare condition and the doctors don't expect her to live past 21. And she really kind of takes that literally. And, um, for her 21st birthday, her best friend Charm throws her a Sleeping Beauty themed birthday complete with spinning wheels and she pricks her finger and gets um, whisked away into like a Sleeping Beauty fairy tale land where she meets another young girl named Primrose who is like another Sleeping Beauty and together they embark on this adventure uh, to hopefully help each other uh, with some of the issues that they are dealing with. Um, I enjoyed it. I honestly don't really know what to say about it. It is quite a short book. Like I said, it's a novella, so it's just a little bit over 100 pages long. Um, when I first saw this book, I thought it was a junior book, um, but no, it's an adult book and uh, it's got like these cool little illustrations throughout the way uh, as you're reading it. Some nice little illustrations. Um, it was an enjoyable book. Once again, I just kind of feel like fantasy, even though it's based on Sleeping Beauty, I just kind of feel like the fantasy aspect is a little hard for me to ground myself in it. Um, but it was a good book. I enjoyed it nevertheless. So that's it, everyone. That's everything that I read in 2021. Let me know in the comments what books you're reading, what books you read in 2021, what are your favorite books, um, you know, all of that good stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more videos uh, that are similar on this channel. And I will see you very soon in another video.